Welcome back to Seeking in Setsu 2. Let's see what's in this cave. And whoa, the girl needs some some HP. So let's throw a piece of candy on her. Purim. And I'm going to switch over to the girl the boy, because he does more damage. And this thing is called a Tom Pole. And who else thinks that thing looks like a Pokemon? I'm pretty sure Secret of Mana predates Pokemon. I think Pokemon came out in 94 or 95 or something like that. Secret of Mana came out in 93, I believe. Because 93 is when I got my subscription to Nintendo Power. Uh, I got the first issue I got was issue 50. And now it turns into a... some kind of lizard. That can actually swallow you. And in order to get your party member or yourself out, uh, the, another person has to hit him, and he'll bark you out. Oh my goodness, he killed the sprite. Oh, he's not dead yet. Okay. Yeah, in, until they have the Reaper over their head, you can't use the thing on them. Uh, and also, you can... Um, if you use a candy on somebody right before they die, even after the final blow has been struck, uh, if the candy gets to them, it'll actually prevent them from dying. Oh, it didn't charge it up long enough. So, this guy will heal himself, and he will heal himself greatly. Uh, but when we're attacking him while he's being healed, our damage stacks. So you see right there we did 98 damage, because it, it accounted for every hit that he took while he was curing himself. So I'm going to do a charged attack, and I think eventually he runs out of magic. You can tell because he'll get into that little pose where he's shaking his head back and forth. Uh, but no heal will come down from the screen, uh, from on top of him, because his magic won't work anymore. Stop eating us! Stop eating me, particularly. Yes, thank you for letting me out. And I think we should be pretty close to killing him right now. Two damage, yes. 40, 46 is pretty good. Alright, let's see. Uh, hopefully he's still out of... Yeah, he's out of mana. See, he didn't cure himself that time, even though he got into the, the uh, posture of it. And, uh, should be almost dead. Alright, he's dead. And look, there's a crack in the wall up there that's mysterious. Uh, we just got the boomerang orb, I believe. And for anybody wondering why I like the music in this game, this is my absolute favorite track in the game. So, while I'm looking to see what orb we got, listen to this music. Beautiful song. Love this song. There's a couple of really good remixes of this song on OC Remix if you want to go check it out. There's a lot of really good Secret of Mana remixes on that channel, uh, on that webpage. Um, I'm Undyne. Thank you for rescuing me. Uh, as a reward for the rescue, I'm going to give you two, two of you magic powers. For Purim, I give healing and party affecting magic. And for Pokeway, I give you attack magic. What about me? One day your sword will be stronger than any magic. And also, Purim can cast sabers on you, on your sword, so that you can attack with the effects of those magic. Now I will join you. You've received, received Undyne's power. Uh, and this, this next line coming up that the sprite says, to me, along with the music, is one of the creepiest things that happens in the entire game. So, so uh, we're about to get the uh, uh, pole dart. Here's the pole dart. We just received the final weapon, and it's also a projectile weapon. So, this line that the sprite's about to say, very creepy. With this magic, no one is going to be able to stop me. That look on his face. Just the, the bright pink hair over those, those slanted eyes. 
he is going to mess some enemies up with this magic. And the magic is way overpowered in this game. If you keep it leveled up, yes, you will do some serious damage. Um, also, in the description of one of the past videos, I, I mentioned that I named him wrong. His name is actually spelled P-O-P-O-I. Popoi, not Popoe, but I'm not going to call him that anyways. I'm going to call him Sprite. All right, here we have the Sprite's magic. And uh, oh, I was going to show you the new weapon, actually. It's a pole dart. It's a projectile weapon. And one thing that I used to, me and my brother, when we played this game, we used to hate being the one to level this up. But now I, we've both grown to like it, because if you look right here, you see there's an arc. It goes up and then falls back down. Well, the way this game calculates attack damage, uh, if there's an enemy up here when I throw it, it will actually hit this enemy here. Or if there's an enemy here and there's not an enemy here, it'll fall down onto the other enemy. So the attack range of this thing is twice that of the whip or any other long range weapon because of the arc that it goes in. So I can actually hit an enemy in any of this area with the pole dart. But if you throw it up and down, it's just a straight shot. So, very good weapon. I'm going to equip the boy with it. And here we have the Ifish, so we're going to get to show off some of the new magic. So I'm going to switch over to Popoe. And here's Undyne's uh, sprite, uh, the, little, uh, the little Undyne icon. And here we have Freeze. You can use Freeze on one or all the enemies. Of course, if you attack one enemy, it does more damage than if you attack all the enemies. Let's see. You can attack all of them. And for any of you who are playing along with me in the game, uh, I have a little tip for you when it comes to targeting with, with enemies on the screen. If you look when I push the menu button, the screen lifts up a little bit. So if there's any enemies in the, the bottom of your screen, on the bottom of your screen, they might be out of target range. So you, you need to keep that in mind when you go to, uh, to focus on the enemies. And see, all of them are, are in range right now. So I'm going to go use his next spell. HP Absorb. This takes a little bit of life from the enemies and gives it to me. Uh, and the higher the level is, of course, the higher the, uh, the amount of HP you will take away. And one innovation in this game, as far as the magic goes, as your magic level increases, the size of your magic, the animation of the magic actually uh, gets bigger or changes entirely. Um, and here, if you go into the weapon screen, if you push R, here's your magic, and there's the eight slots for potentially eight magic spells. You see right there it says 027. If you click on it, there's no orb down there. You don't get magic orbs uh, like you do for the weapons. Uh, it tells you the three names of the magic and uh, the description of them. Um, this magic right now can go up to level 1, and you know that by how many mana seeds you have. That blue seed down there is a mana seed, and it says the number 1 right there next to it. You can only go as high as the number of mana seeds you have with your with your magic level ups. And so let's show off the sprite's last spell, which is Acid Rain. And if you see, it, it takes 3 MP, and these other two take 2 MP. And that I have five left of eleven, and your MP count goes up as you level up. So let's use this on him. And there's Acid Rain, level zero. And now I'm going to show you the girl's magic. Scroll down, all right. There's Undyne, and here is Ice Saber, or Frost Saber, or whatever you want to call it. You can, again, you can use it on one person, or you can use it on everybody. I don't know if you can see that cursor flashing because of YouTube's frame rate. But there we go, we cast the saber on everybody. And what the saber, what the ice saber or frost saber does, if you hit an enemy, it has a chance to frosty them. But I don't like the frosty status because you can't actually hit the enemy while they're frosty. You do damage the first time you hit them, but when they get frosty, you can't do any more damage. To them. And you see, my. My sword's not glowing anymore, so I don't have any more. The the saber wore off, and as your levels go up, the saber lasts longer. And this is cure water. I'm going to use it on the boy because he has a little bit of life. 
This is your healing spell, your cure spell. And that did a ton of damage. That's what the, the little lizard was doing when we fought him. He's using cure water. This is remedy. This cures status like uh, engulf, uh, which is something a fire spell will do, or poison, or anything like that. It's uh, it's an antidote spell. And it only does one MP. So when leveling up in this game, uh, when you're leveling up her, her um, Undyne, use Remedy because it only takes one MP. So I can use this seven more times, and even though a character doesn't have a status ailment, you can still use it on a character. And I'll talk a little more about leveling up. Hey look, he's tangled. That's funny. Um, enemies have a chance to be tangled by base, uh, certain weapons with the... Uh, uh, certain weapons as they level up they have different status effects um, and I think the, uh, the pole dart may have the ability to tangle I'm not sure um, yeah about leveling up magic uh, two things to note about it one when you have your weapons out you get more experience for casting a spell you get twice as much experience so if you see right here, um, here we have uh, 27, she has 27 experience, and see we still have our weapons out, but I'm going to skip past these guys. Come on, Randy. Randy! Not being a slacker. We still have weapons out here, but I don't think we'll have weapons out in this area. See that we have no weapons. Alright, I'm going to show you, I'm going to use Remedy, I have 27, I'm going to use Remedy on somebody. Okay, now let's go look at her stats. Okay, now she has 31. Alright, so that was, what, 4? Alright, now if we come in here and use Remedy, it'll go from 31 to... Forty. So it did nine. So uh, the last time it basically had four and a half. So um see our swords our weapons are out. So if you're leveling up your magic, level up your magic in the field of battle. Or even if there's not enemies around, if you have your sword out, level up. There's later on in the game, there's a temple, the wind temple. You will have your weapons out in the temple and the guy in the back will heal you for free. Great place to level up all your magic for her. You can't level up the sprites magic. Um, because you can't cast anything on us with the sprites magic. You have to attack the enemies with it. So you have to level him up in the field of combat. Now, next thing to note about magic. If you look at... Uh, when I cast the spell, you'll see Undyne pop out in front of Purim. And if I try to go back into the menu before Undyne disappears, you'll see that her magic is grayed out. Uh, also, use it on somebody else so the animation doesn't take as long. See, there's, there's Undyne, and Undyne disappeared. Um, if you select somebody else, like let's say I select the sprite, and pick Purim, let's get Purim to cast the spell on Randy. Alright, you see Undyne is out. If I select Purim, now, now Undyne is grayed out. But if I write when Undyne disappears, you see Undyne disappeared, you can cast it again. So you can chain your spells together. Wait for Undyne to disappear. And... There. See, I used up all her mana. So, she should be at a pretty high... Almost, uh... High enough to... Yeah. To get a level up on her magic. So, same thing works for the sprite. That's one of the reasons when I'm playing this game. I generally tend to stay as Randy. And you see the little green square around the, uh... You can't see my finger, but the little green square on Undyne. Uh, that means it's the sprite. There's a pink square for the girl, and there's a blue square for the boy. So if they're piled up on top of each other, that's how you know which one you have, which menu you have selected. Um, so, I'm going to level up his magic again. When you're leveling up your magic, I recommend using the magic in that, in that spirit. Um, or elemental, that's what they're called in the game. That has the low that cost the lowest mana, obviously. And also keep your weapons level up. Um, 
generally if you play this game where you you keep a conscious eye on which weapons haven't been leveled up and which uh, which weapons need their orbs upgraded make sure you keep all of your orbs up to date at watts and you'll be able to access watts everywhere you see how i'm hitting that if it's even though he's above me yeah that's the pole darts also um keep your weapons upgraded uh um your orbs uh, caught up and make sure that your characters have weapons they don't have everything leveled up on and you shouldn't have to grind for weapon levels and later on in the game some of the bosses that take a lot of physical damage charging up your weapons will do good but in most boss battles you're gonna want to use magic because magic is much stronger than weapons as as the level up gets higher I think it's the pole dart that's tangling the enemies. So, I know I've, I've talked a lot, I've done a lot of tutorial here, so let's see if we can get some kind of uh, progress going on here. Um, if we go talk to Luca, I don't think we have to talk to her, but I'll talk to her anyways. Let's run up here. She will tell us, or, uh, let's see. Somebody told us that the witch might know how to clear the lava that we saw in the underground palace. And, well, using Undyne magic is how we're going to do that. So she cures us, and she says, you want to save? Yeah, sure, we'll save. She says, take Undyne to the underground palace. You might be able to use it to remove the seal. And that underground palace is where the uh, that hole opened up that I showed you where that orb and the lava were in Gaia's navel under the dwarf village. So we're gonna head that way. And I am actually going to go through the forest here. Because the enemies are stronger than going in this direction. Even though the path is further this way, I wanna get more experience. So, I'll meet you at the underground palace. All right, right here, Purim's about to get a level up. Uh, Boy, I just got to level up on the whip. The Purim's about to get a level up on her magic. So, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Um, or what it sounds like. That's how you know you got to level up on your magic. So the magic's level one. Now, uh, let's see if the animation increases. I think uh, if you look at those stars, they might be a little bigger. Not sure, but I think that the magic animation goes up every other every odd number but we'll have to go back and look see now it does 266 so it is it is vital that you keep your magic leveled up because you will do so much more damage and heal more life and everything with uh, with the the magic at the highest level you can get it at and like I said before the some of the bosses in the game I don't think you can attack them with weapons. So you need your magic level though. So anyways, I'll meet you back in uh, the Underground Palace. Here's another thing I wanted to showcase in the game. I'm going to do a hit it real quick right here. Um, if you look at the enemies here, uh, it's best to leave the enemies and attack them one at a time when you're leveling up your magic. But if you see right here, I attack this enemy. And even though I'm pretty sure this magic is going to kill him in one hit, if you stack your magic, as long as the enemy was still alive when you cast it, it'll cast it twice, and you still get the points for it. You still get the experience for it. See? He's still alive. Uh, well, I don't have any more magic now, but... Uh, yeah, that's another good thing to note about leveling up your magic. Alright, really, I'll see you at the Underground Palace. Alright, Pupway just got to level up on his magic. I know I said I'd meet you at the Underground Palace. Uh, let's see if the magic's any bigger now. I don't know. I can't tell. I'd have to go back and look at the video. Choose that one. It may be. Anyways, at the higher levels it does. It's obvious when it gets bigger. Alright, this is totally a tutorial episode, so you're just gonna see a bunch of tutorials. Long range weapons. Projectile weapons are the only things that can hit enemies above or below you. See how I'm doing that? If you look at the girl, she has the spear. I cannot hit that enemy. I mean, 
it. It may look like I hit him, but those other two were hitting him. I can't actually hit him. Can I? I? You're not supposed to be able to hit him. It may be because the rock was there, I don't know. But I don't think you can hit... You're not supposed to be able to hit an enemy on a higher or lower level than you with a handheld melee weapon. So yeah. Onward to the underground palace again. All right, here we are in the dwarf village, and here's Watts. We need to talk to him because we have a couple of weapon orbs that we need to upgrade. We have the knuckle orb, which we got from the spiky tiger, and uh, the boomerang orb, which we got from the little lizard dude. So, and you can see each time the weapon uh, goes up with an orb, I think it becomes twice as expensive for the next orb level up. So, here's the new boomerang. It's a check ram. This is, uh, if, for any of you who've ever watched fantasy television, the check ram, or chalk ram, or shock ram, I don't know how you want to pronounce it, is the weapon that Xena Warrior Princess used. And I know you can't see it uh, because of the sprites, sprite, with the boomerang in his hand, but later on when you upgrade, uh, uh, boomerangs to boomerangs that are circular like that, your boomerang will actually be round like the one in Xena. Um, but I guess they overlooked this sprite on the on the boomerang. And the other upgrade that we got was the knuckle. It is now the power glove. And it is much stronger than it was. You look right here. It's 29. I think it was like 21 or 22 before we got the upgrade. For her. I mean, it'd be different for the boy in the sprite. Use your attack power is based on your strength rating and the strength of the weapon. So I'm going to go up here and make sure that I have enough um, healing items. And the reason I wanted to get some experience on the way here is because this next area can be kind of brutal. Uh, especially the, uh, the goblin type enemy that you encounter right in the very beginning of the place. They multiply and they will try to mess you up and succeed in messing you up because they have a melee weapon and a ranged weapon. I think that's all I need from here. So I'm gonna go save. Just like in every RPG, you need to save all of them. And I do need to sleep because I used up a lot of my magic, but the sprite is, uh, used, as you saw, Sprite's at level 1, and the girl's at level 1 on both of their magic. Another place you can level up the girl, if you don't care about how little experience you get without your weapons out, uh, you can come into an inn, heal, uh, use your magic until she runs out of MP, and then go sleep again. And uh, I can't tell you how many times I did that in this game. But it's more fun to do it in the battlefield. Just remember to use it, so it'll level up. And I'm going to go in as the boy, and I'm actually going to set these two as passive, or defensive. Because these enemies will mess you up, like I said. 